we're going to see how to launch and run a Laravel application on Fly.io. We're going to spin up a new Laravel application. We're going to run it on Fly.io, and then we're going to go through the full stack to see how to do all the things you need, right? A database, a cache like Redis, running uh, cron jobs for the Laravel scheduler, and running queue jobs, right? Background jobs that run in the background. So the first thing I need to do here is create a new Laravel application. So we'll do composer, create project, uh, Laravel, Laravel. I'm going to name this, I don't know, Sofan, I guess. I've just read the three body problem. Great book. Once that's done, we'll get into that directory. We'll do PHP artisan serve just to show that it's actually running. And that's up and running. Great. So we have a fresh Laravel application here. How do we get this up on fly? Well, really, all you need to do is run fly launch. And what's happening here is that it's detecting that we have a Laravel application based on some files that are present here, and it will create the files needed to run on fly with this. So we can see it detected a Laravel app successfully, and we can now name our app. I'll just call this Sofan as well. And I have two organizations in fly, and I'll just use my personal one for this demonstration. Then we can pick what the primary region for our application is. You're not stuck in this region because you can deploy to multiple regions pretty easily on fly. Um, Boston is the closest one to me because I live in Connecticut. So let's pick that. Do I want to deploy now? I actually don't want to, but also notice that this set up an app key secret for me within Fly. So uh, Fly.io has environment variables and secrets. Secrets are encrypted and are handled specially, right? Our application key for Laravel is usually something you keep secret because it's used as your encryption key. So Fly is going to generate one for you and set that for you so it's already there. I don't want to deploy just yet because I want us to take a peek under the hood and just see what happened here. So first things first is we actually have an application created and um, that application is named Sofan, but there's nothing um, going on with it yet, right? We haven't made any deployments. There's no servers running, nothing like that yet. Let's go ahead and see what actually was created. The first thing to note is we have a, a Docker file. Now, fly.io has you build Docker images, and it uses that image and turns it into a real uh, virtual machine image, and that is what it runs in the servers. So it's not running uh, Docker containers at all. Instead, it's running a real virtual machine on Firecracker, which is the same technology that powers AWS's Lambda. So it's a real virtual machine, but it's created from a Docker image. So whatever you can do in Docker, you can basically do on fly.io. You just have to have a working Docker file. Now, this created a Docker file for us, and it does a bunch of stuff. It can take a specific PHP version, a Node.js version. It'll install all your dependencies. It detects if you're using Laravel Octane and um, does the setup that's needed for that. It'll build your Node.js dependencies, right? Your static assets based on if you're using Vite or uh, the older Webpack, right? Or Mix, I believe it's called. And then it puts it all together and makes a working Docker image that you can run, you know, in Docker, but also on Fly.io. Now, there's also a fly.toml configuration file created here, which specifies a few things. One is the application name. So when you run commands like fly status, it'll actually find this fly.toml file and see that it's the application named Sofan and it'll run, you know, status against the application. Otherwise, you could do the dash A flag and say, you know, whatever application makes sense for you. Okay, so fly status, we already saw. It just shows nothing right now. The fly.toml file is the interesting thing right here. Uh, we have a few things, right? The app name is Sofan. The primary region is Boston. The console command to run um, console commands, which is a specific fly feature here, like you can do fly SSH console, that kind of thing, will run a tinker session by default. And then we have our build arguments, right? So it's going to default to PHP 8.2 and Node 18, which you can change. And then other stuff. So environment variables, right? So these are not secrets. You shouldn't put secrets and commit them into your fly.toml file. Instead, these should be your non-secret environment variables, the stuff that is normally inside of your .env file. Fly.io, by default, won't um, package up your .env file into your application and run it. Instead, it prefers to have you set the environment variables here, which gets set as system environment variables inside of the virtual machine. So production, uh, the log channel gets set to standard error instead of the default log channel for Laravel and uses JSON formatting. All of this is just better for the fly logging mechanism, which really wants your apps to spit out logs to standard error or standard out. Session driver is cookie, which is a good default for when you're load balancing an application. It's you know one of a few you can use, but cookie is a good default one that just kind of works out of the box anywhere. The reason why we have a session driver of cookie, um, one that works with load balancing, is because you can very easily spin up multiple VM instances um, on fly for your application, either in the same region or in multiple regions around the world. And that's a 
it's a load balanced environment essentially. So using the session driver that makes sense for that out of the box is, is what's used here. Okay, HTTP services. So this is how you tell Fly that any request coming from the outside world into the Fly infrastructure is routed to your application. It listens internally in port 8080. So this isn't the external port you'll see that we use. Um, our applications will run regularly on port 80 or 443 for TLS traffic or regular traffic. But the internal port, the uh, web server in the, contain in the Docker image we're building here runs on port 8080. We're going to force HTTPS. We always want HTTPS to be used in our case. And then we have auto stop and auto start machines set to true, which is an interesting feature. If your application goes idle uh, in terms of HTTP requests, then the VMs, the machines get shut down after an idle period. And then when a new request comes to your application, it starts back up and it starts back up pretty quickly. So the machines will actually, the virtual machines here, will get shut down and you won't pay for all that resource usage when they're idle, which is a pretty nice default. You can change it if you want. Minimum machines running is zero. Uh, the processes is app. I'll go into that stuff later. All right, so the last thing I want to mention about configuration files here is that we have a .fly directory also created, and that has some files needed for your uh, Docker build setup. Like this is all related to making the Docker image. You can edit these, you can not edit these, whatever you want, just know that they're there. So my Laravel application, it's just gonna work out of the box here because that's the default, but I could do something like fly secrets set and I could do, you know, key equals value here and set some secrets if I wanted to, or I could keep editing my fly.toml file. Like I mentioned before, to add more environment variables if needed. In my case, I don't need to do any of that because this is a default application that's just going to work. So let's go ahead and run fly deploy. You can see here that I have some stuff auto completing from previous commands I ran. None of this matters for you. It's just this is a very specific use case. But you can see ha equals false is something interesting as well. I'll cover that in a minute. So we're just going to run fly deploy here and it's going to build the Docker image and push that up to the fly registry and then spin up the machines and start the application. Now, the interesting part about the Docker setup is that I'm not running Docker locally here. When you create an account on fly, it will create a uh, virtual machine for you that just has a Docker instance in it and it uses that as a remote builder. This is really handy for when um, you don't have Docker installed locally, of course, but also if you're on like an ARM64 based Macintosh, an M1 or M2 Mac, Fly.io prefers Intel AMD based Docker images. It doesn't run an ARM architecture. So this remote builder helps get around that because it's on the correct architecture. So that is what's building my Docker image right now. It's not happening locally. And once that is built, it get pushed up to the Fly registry and then it'll start up the virtual machines and run our application. We can see a few things happening in the output here. I can monitor the uh, deployment here. This is just outputting Fly logs. So if it went into my Fly.io account, it's setting up Sentry for us because you get a free Sentry account within uh, Fly.io when you create applications. So we can actually send our exceptions to Sentry. And now it's also creating two at machines. So by default, Fly is going to spin up two virtual machines for you. This is just redundancy, essentially. They will both be started, so you're technically paying for two VMs once it starts. But because of that auto stop option, they both eventually stop and actually takes a bunch to start that second machine. So once you start sending requests to your application, it's going to turn on one machine and one machine will handle them. The second machine will only boot up if the uh, first machine fails for some reason, like the, the underlying host fails. Uh, but more commonly, it'll spin up if you're tr getting a lot of traffic and it needs two machines to handle that. But by default, you're really just going to be having one machine run at a time. If you don't like that, you can actually destroy that second machine and the app will handle that just fine. If you don't want it to create two machines when you're deploying or creating an application, you do that, um, what is it, fly launch or fly deploy, and you do HA equals false, and it will not create a second machine in that case. It also notes that, so the machine for app has services with auto stop machines is true. This will be uh, this will be stopped when idling, right? Perfect. Now, this is uh, up and running. So let's do fly, I think, open. That'll open up in our default browser, and we can see, you know, it's, it's actually the exact same thing we just saw, except we're not running localhost anymore, right? It's actually your application is up on fly. We go over here and see fly status, and it shows we have our two machines running. They're both in Boston. They're both started. Eventually, these will stop. And uh, when I send a new request to them after they're stopped, one will get started and serve the request. While we're here, we can just check out fly logs for our app here and just check out the log output, which tells you that stuff is starting. This is all the output from the container running uh, Nginx and PHP FPM, and that's all 
monitored by a supervisor in this case. They're all running, they're all spitting uh, logs out, and if we had an error in our application, that would also come out here as well. So we can see here, I waited a little bit, and my virtual machines, my machines here, I've actually stopped. Now, if I send another web request here, it's gonna take a few seconds, a few milliseconds for the VM to start back up, and then it's gonna serve the request. If I do fly status, we'll see one of the machines has started back up. So we can see here that machines stop automatically after they're idle for a while, and when they receive a new network request, a HTTP request in this case, they'll start back up. So they're super efficient in that if they're idle, they're essentially off, right? And you're not charged for that time. So in the next few videos, we're gonna go into a little bit more depth of running your Laravel applications on Fly to IO. And while this is pretty cool already, right? I just did Fly Launch, I have an app ready and running. We still have a little bit more stuff we wanna do, right? Like run a database, get Redis working, maybe get Cron working for a scheduler and, um, QJobs working, all that good stuff that we expect and want with a Laravel application. We'll see in the next few videos how to get all of that up and running.